Well, the Most High be praised today. I'm so grateful to be able to have this opportunity to share and to teach the scriptures. It's always a blessing to be able to open the Bible and to share the word. I want to greet each of you in the mighty name of Yahshua, our King. And I want to let you know that you are blessed. Hallelujah. And that all things are possible to those who believe. It's so important that we understand that truth. So grateful to each one. Again, I want to say um, shalom to you who are joining us by live stream and trust that you have been able to receive the encouragement of Elohim in your heart and in your life as we have been looking at and considering all that has been happening in the world around us and in this country in particular um, I'm sure many have uh, been somewhat shocked <clears throat> by the events that took place last week on Wednesday. And as we live from day to day, we must come to terms with the fact that despite what happens in our world around us, our faith and our trust must yet be in Elohim. And I know that there are some who probably would say, well, how can you trust in Elohim when all of this stuff goes on? And how can you trust in Elohim when there's so much uncertainty? And I'd like to say that Elohim is not the one that is responsible for man's condition, man chose generations and generations ago to do things his way and not to walk in the way of the Creator. And as a result of that, he has chosen to rule himself and throw off the theocratic rule of the creator for his life. And as a result of living the way he has chosen to live, men have had wars because they want to have power. They want to have territory. One person says, this is mine. Another one has said, no, this is mine, and they fight. And um, that's really the nuts and bolts of why mankind has gotten to the place where it is. But in our country that we live in today, we have seen some things that have been rather shocking, at least with reference to those of the world. But for us who are in the Messiah, Yahshua, the things that we see happening in the world are indicators that the Most High is soon to wrap things up. As we look at the governments in our world, and in particular the government that we live in in this country, there appears to be a great deal of instability and we see a great divide but for us who are in the Messiah Yahshua we have to remember that our king said that my kingdom is not of this world he said if my kingdom were of this world then my servants would fight and so we who are his servants we're not allowed to fight because our kingdom at present is spiritual. 
But when our Messiah returns, and only when he returns, will he gather us together, and he will establish his kingdom and visible rule on the earth where we not only will fight with him, but we will rule with him. But he has not come yet. And so he has called us to be peacemakers, those who create shalom. And so I want to encourage each one of us, while we might be looking at a somewhat chaotic situation, while we're looking at a situation in this particular country where it appears that there's been an attack on the democratic process and democracy is a rule of the people type of government. And although those things may be happening, because it is an infringement upon the rights of the whole that may think differently, yet for us who are in Yahshua, we must always follow the scripture and always be people that seek for the shalom of the country and for the shalom of the people of Elohim. So I want to encourage us to be peacemakers. But in our making of peace, we must also understand that the Almighty desires justice in the lives of those who are not being justly treated. We cannot ever separate peace from justice. And so we want to pray to that end for justice as well. Now today I just want to um, read some scriptures found in Psalm 103. I want to talk about the benefits of Yah, the benefits of the Creator. I just want to share something tonight to encourage our hearts to remind us of some things that are important. Sometimes we need just a simple word of encouragement, just a simple reminder of what Elohim has said belongs to us as his people. Because there are many people who are hurting. There are many people who find themselves depressed. There are many people who find themselves discouraged. There are many people who find themselves oppressed. And in times like these, so many find themselves in a variety of categories that are not always positive. But the word encourages us so that we can remember that Elohim has not forgotten about us, but has given us a solution to every scenario we might be finding ourselves in. There is a solution. And there is an answer to the things that we may be facing. And so let's read a little bit. I, I'm not sure exactly um, how many verses I'm going to read, but I just want to share from my heart today in Psalm 103. I'm going to start at the first verse, and it says, Bless Yahuwah, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless Yahuwah, O my soul, and do not forget all 
his benefits. So we see here that there are benefits that Yah has for those who are his. And as David, who is the psalmist here, is writing, he's speaking to himself. He is, in reality, encouraging himself. Now, David had a lot of things and challenges that he dealt with in his life. He had many ups and downs. He had ups and downs with marital situations, with family domestic situations, with his sons. He, he had challenges with the king who was trying to take his life. I mean, David has had many, many challenges. And so when I'm sure he's reflecting on whatever challenge he might have been dealing with at the time, he would always go to Elohim for the answer. And he speaks to himself and he says, Bless Yahuwah, O my soul. He's telling himself, Bless Yah. Baruch Ha Yah. Baruch Yah. Give the support to Yah. And so he tells his soul to bless Yahuwah. From the very depths of his soul, every part of his being, he's telling his soul to bless Yahuwah. He's telling himself, just empty yourself out to Yah and bless him. And don't forget his benefits. When life comes and brings challenges, when life comes and brings things upon you, that are overwhelming, that's the time when you need to remember the benefits of Yah. So he says, do not forget his benefits. And then he begins to talk about some of those benefits. Listen to some of these benefits that David lists. He says, who forgives all your iniquities as sins, moral evil. You know the times when you slip up, when you mess up, bad decisions that you make, wrong turns in life that you make, that send you down a road that it may seem as though you may not be able to get back on track, at least you might feel that way. When you commit sins, because of your own selfishness, whether it's desires for pleasure or whether it's desire to have something that you want so bad or whether it's greed or whatever it is that you want to experience. But sometimes the passion to want to experience something might lead you down a dark road that will end up bringing certain destructions upon you. He says he forgives your iniquities. What do we see? We see that Elohim forgives us of our sins. So, you know, times in our life that we might encounter where we've not made the best decisions, and sometimes it may be purposefully, and then we begin to feel like the Most High won't forgive us. Sometimes we, we get filled with self-pity that we feel like we're unable to be redeemed. But I want you to understand that one of these benefits of Elohim, because you belong to him, is that he will forgive you. He will cleanse you. He can restore you. He can make you whole again. That's a benefit. Some of us need to know that. Some of us have messed up and done some things where we find ourselves in positions where it's like a big, deep chasm and it feels like we can never get out of. But the Bible tells us that if we only believe, all things are possible to those who believe. So guess what? 
He forgives your sins. It's a benefit. He's a restorer. It's a benefit. You don't ever need to feel as though there's not a second chance or a third chance or a fourth chance. Now, I'm not saying that a person should just take advantage of the mercies of the Creator and just do stuff willfully thinking that, oh, He'll forgive me because the Most High knows he knows whether we're playing games or not. He knows whether we're trying to run game on him. He knows that. And those who are trying to run game, you need to beware. You might lose your soul running game on the Most High. He's not stupid. He's smarter than all of us. He knows the intents of our hearts and our minds before we even do stuff. I'm just, I'm just saying for those of us who have made bad decisions and made wrong choices, and who are truly repentant of those bad decisions we made because we were just caught up in the moment. There's always restoration. We need to know that's a benefit. And then here's another benefit. Who heals all your diseases? Who heals all your diseases? Who heals all your diseases? There, there are many people today that are sick in their bodies. And many today, that, many today that are suffering in their bodies due to a variety of things. Some of it is, is due to the present pandemic. Some of it is due to physical conditions that have developed in our bodies because some of us have made choices to have diets that were unclean. We've chosen to have diets, but we've eaten things that were not for our best good. And over time, it has caused havoc in our bodies, broken down our organs, torn down our immune systems. But I want to say something here. He's always a restorer. That's the benefit of healing. It says, who heals all your diseases. Now, I didn't write this. And every time I read this passage here in Psalm 103, I am always amazed at the fact that he says that he heals all our diseases. And if he heals all our diseases, then that means that we should begin to start believing that he heals all our diseases. We who are his children need to start embracing that idea that he heals all my diseases, that the benefit of Yah is healing. If you could just say that to yourself, the benefit of Yah is healing. So regardless of what I might be feeling in my body, regardless of what the doctors may say is in my body, regardless of what I might be experiencing in my body, the benefit of Yahuwah is healing. Did you hear that? The benefit of Yahuwah is healing. See, David was telling himself, bless Yah, give him praise, bless him, and don't forget his benefits. Forgiveness is a benefit. Healing is a benefit. These things are some really key areas because these two areas is where many people find themselves, most people find themselves. It's dealing with Guilt because of their sin and sickness in their body. And guess what? The scriptures already provide solutions. That there are benefits. There is forgiveness of sins. And there is healing from sickness. And some might say, well, you know what? I've read that before, but I'm still sick and I'm still going through. Well, you know what? I'd like to challenge you to begin to start confessing this scripture, to begin to start saying to yourself that healing is my benefit. Hey, go even further and say that 
because healing is my benefit, I am healed now. What's wrong with saying that? Some people have a problem with making those kind of declarations about themselves because of the fact that they look at their condition and they want to confess their condition. So this is now what I'm talking right now. This is the kind of language I'm talking right now. This is this is faith talk. What the Most High wants us to learn how to do is to start believing in these benefits and then start claiming the benefits in the right now. Since he heals me of all my diseases, then just start saying, I claim healing over all my diseases right now. Nothing wrong with saying that. If it says he heals all, I'm claiming healing over all my diseases. I accept healing from sickness. We need to start saying that. You need to start saying that. You need to start believing that. Because it's a benefit. It's a part of the covenant that we have with Elohim. It's a benefit. And then, in verse 4, it says, Who redeems your life from destruction. Wow, what a blessing. So, as I mentioned a little earlier, you know how we make these bad decisions sometimes in our in our life, and it sends us down a road that just kind of shatters our world. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You don't have to go into detail, but some of us have experienced our world being shattered. Some have experienced their world being shattered in some instances where they've lost their home, lost their employment, lost lost loved ones. They they, 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 they're out on the street, they're homeless, you know, there are all kinds of things that have just really caused their life to be turned upside down. But this other benefit, it says, who redeems your life from destruction. Your life is redeemable. Elohim considers our lives to be redeemable. Don't ever feel like the mistakes that you made in your life are so terrible or so jacked up that there's no redemption. There's redemption. If you believe and if you repent, there is redemption. See, the thing that the Most High wants out of us, regardless of how low we may go, he wants us to come to a place where we are truly repentant. That means that we are remorseful, not, not just saying we're sorry, but we are remorseful and that we have decided that we're going to go in a different direction. Better than that, we're going to come back to him so he can lead us and guide us in the right way. That's what he wants. And you know what? When we come to our senses, if we've gone down a path that has caused our life to be turned upside down, then we will have redemption. That's a benefit. And those of you who are hearing this today, you know who you are. You know what's happened in your life. You know the things that you've gone through. You know the things that have shaken up your world. You need to know that there is redemption for you. You might have backslidden. You might have turned away from the Creator. No, there's still redemption for you. You need to know that. This is a benefit. And then after we get redeemed, I mean, here it is. David talks about three things. He talks about forgiveness, healing, and redemption. Three things. After he does those things, now listen to what he does now. It says, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. So what does he do? He fixes us up, brings us out, of these negative conditions, delivers us from the guilt by forgiving us. He delivers us from diseases. So now we have physical strength. 
We have the ability now in our body so we can serve him. Because, you know, you can't really serve the Most High in a productive way when you're sick. The Most High needs you healthy in order to use you. Now, don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean that he can't use your life to win somebody to him. But ultimately, the Almighty has created us in these physical bodies so that we might use our bodies in the process of serving him. And you can't really serve the Most High at your optimum potential unless you're healthy. That just makes sense. And so after he does these things, he delivers us out of the mess. Let's just say that. He delivers us out of the mess. After he does that, then he crowns us with his loving kindness. This, this denotes the goodness of the, of the Father. This, this just denotes the goodness of the Father. It says that he crowns us with steadfast love and mercies. And then listen to this. Verse 5. Who satisfies you with good. Now when we talk about the word good, we're talking about that Hebrew word tov. Now, when we think about the word good, the first thing comes to our mind is stuff because we human beings consider the good life as having a big house, having a lot of money, having a big, nice car or small car, whatever, having a nice car, you know, having, having you know, um, a, a wonderful marriage, you know, when we think about good, those are the things that come to our mind. We think about things and stuff and being happy. But good means having a functional life. Good means being surrounded by the support of the house. It just simply means having the support of Elohim surrounding your life. And that means that you are being brought into a lifestyle of functionality or order. It has to do with being put in a position where you're living according to Elohim's design. Because the only way that you can really have the support of the Creator is that you live according to Elohim's design. You live according to the functionality of the Creator. We have what's called function, and then we have what's called dysfunction. So the best way for me to put it in describing this word tov is having a functional life. And think of it in terms of the opposite of dysfunction. You know how we talk about people who come from a dysfunctional environment, <laughs> okay? And those who come from a functional environment are the ones who end up having emotional health, physical health, and good spiritual health. Generally, that's what we're talking about, when you have a good functional life. And that's what told means. Where it says that he satisfies you with good, it's talking about Elohim wants to give you the functional life so that you can have the support of Elohim. But when we talk about blessing, you know, we talk about blessing. Everybody talk about, oh, well, well you know, you, you know, he'll bless you. Well, when we talk about blessing as, as human beings, we think of blessing as being stuff. The word Bless or Baruch, as we've taught before in other teachings. It literally means having the support of the Creator. See, blessing means having the support of the Creator. And having the support of the Creator does not necessarily mean having things. Because you can have, this, have the support of the Creator and not have a mass of things. You see, but you can have the, the, the support of the Creator and also have a mass of things. 
But ultimately, the word blessing means to have the support of the Creator. When you have the support of Elohim on your life, you are doing well. But that comes by being obedient. But check it out here. It says, who satisfies you with good as long as you live. See, what the Almighty wants to do, he wants to take our lives, redeem us, bring us out of the mess and the stuff that we got ourselves in, deliver us from the guilt that we may be carrying or have carried, heal our bodies so that now we can serve him and be at our optimum potential physically. Because that means something to the creator now. It's, this is important. You know, there's some people that think, oh, well, you know, it doesn't matter if I'm healthy or not. It does. It matters that you're healthy to the creator because he designed you and I to live in these bodies and to use them to the fullest. You can't do that when you sit. So one of the benefits is that he wants to heal you. He wants you to be healed. He wants you to have health in your body, wellness in your body. And so he'll satisfy you with good as long as you live. So that your now look at this. So that your youth is renewed like the eagle. See, all of this is talking about him bringing a restoration in your life, getting you to a place where you are restored, where your mind is right, your body is healthy, and your spirit is in communion with the Creator. That, that's, that's ultimately where the Most High wants us to be. And, you know, the writer of this had experienced so many things in his life, ups and downs and cases where he thought he was going to lose his life. I mean, he was in all kinds of situations. And then he came to a position where he began to seek and call on the Most High to deliver him. And the Most High brought his mind back. Listen, there are benefits that I have for you. I'll forgive you. I'll heal you. I'll redeem you. I'll restore you. I'll renew your strength. I'll, I'll give you your youth back. I'll, I'll give it to you. But all he wants us to do is to trust him. Verse 6. Listen to this that the Most High does. And, and this is very important. This verse right here is real important because we need to understand the heart of the Creator. Listen to this. It says, Yahuwah works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. So, those of us in the world who have gone through oppression, and I know a lot of folk can identify with this, including myself. Those who have gone through oppression, injustice, being treated unfairly, and the list goes on. Sometimes you feel like, does the Most High care? Because it seems like society don't care. It seems, it seems like that governmental systems don't care. But listen to what this scripture says. It says, Yahuwah works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. Let me tell you something. For those who have gone through oppression, whether it be through the repercussions of slavery, Jim Crow, racism, hatred, whatever name you want to put on it, because some people don't want to put those names on it, but whatever name you want to put on it, guess what? Elohim is always on the side of the oppressed. Those of you who have heard me teach, I've made this statement before. Elohim is always on the side of the oppressed. I'm going to read the scripture again. Yahuwah works venge vindication, which is the same as vengeance, works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. The Most High is mindful of us who have not received justice. 
When you look in this world and you see situations where those who have done wrong are being let off the hook and those who have not done anything are being condemned, the Most High is mindful of that. He's mindful, he knows, and he is going to deal with those who are not doing justly in the earth. Y'all better watch out. Y'all that, that are not judging right, y'all that are not, I'm talking about those who are in positions of power. I'm talking about those who are in positions in the legal system, the justice system, and those who are in authority, those who know to do right and to do justly, guess what? The Most High is going to get you. And I'm serious. The Most High is going to get you. Did you read the scripture? Yahuwah works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. And when you have a system that is oppressive, if you have a governmental structure, that has laws for the proper justice and it's not being applied right, the Most High is going to deal with that system. You say, well, Overseer Mode, you, you trying to, you trying to uh, scare us? No, I ain't trying to scare I'm just telling you what Elohim's going to do. Wherever there's injustice, you can rest assured Elohim is going to deal with it. If he's got to get in it and tear the system down from the top to the bottom, he's going to deal with it because he is going to ensure that those who are oppressed are vindicated. He's going to ensure that those who have not received just treatment is going to get their justice one way or another. The Most High is going to make it happen. So those of you who have been pushed to the side, you have not been justly treated. You have not received justice. Don't you worry about a thing. Elohim is mindful. Elohim knows. And he's going to move on your behalf. I'm going to go all the way over to verse 18. And then I'm going to wrap this up. Because there's a whole lot that's in this Psalm 103. And we'd be here for a long time if I went through each verse. But I want to go to verse 18. Because verse 18 is the verse that really speaks to us because as we've been talking about these benefits of Yah, these benefits are not for everybody. You say, what? I, you say, I, I thought these benefits were everybody. No, the benefits are not for everybody. They can be for everybody. The benefits of Yah can be for everybody. But as it stands, they are not for everybody. And this verse is going to clear it up. Verse 18, it says, look, listen to this, verse 18, Psalm 103, verse 18. Listen, it says, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. Oh, so all of these benefits that David was talking about here, they're related and they are for those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. See, these benefits are for the house of Israel in Yahshua. These benefits are for those who are in the Messiah. And once you get in the Messiah, well, let me tell you how you get in the Messiah. How you become a child of Elohim. The way you become a child of Elohim, if you're not a child of Elohim, you have to turn from your wickedness. You have to turn from doing life your way. You have to turn from the pagan system that you are in. You say, well, I ain't worshiping no, no gods. I'm not bound down to no idols. You might not be bound down to any idols. But I'm sure that there are a whole lot of things that you have made first priority other than the Most High and His Commandments. And anything you make more important than the Most High and His Commandments, that's an image. That's an idol. That has become 
a high thing to you. That has become an L to you. And that makes you a pagan. Anybody who's not following the Most High through Yahshua, you're a pagan. I know you probably don't want to accept that, but that's what you are. But Elohim still loves you. That's why Yahshua came into the world, because Elohim so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So the way you become a child of Elohim and become a part of the house of Israel in Yahshua, you must repent. You must turn from your life and how you are doing life, give that up, and return to the Creator who made you. Believe on His Son, Yahshua, who died in your place and took your punishment for the crimes you committed against Elohim by not keeping the commandments of the Creator. Because that's what Yahshua did. He died for us. That means he died so that we would not have to die. That's what that's all about. And when you come to the Creator through Yahshua, Him being your Savior now, you're in the family. And so if you are one of those, then all of these benefits apply to you. Because if you mess up, and you're in the family, but you mess up, he'll forgive you. Sickness come on your life, and you trust him, and you believe him, and you put your faith in him. He'll heal you. He said that it's a benefit. When you make a wrong turn in life, you'll redeem your life from destruction. He'll crown you with his loving kindness and tender mercies. What will he do? Satisfy you with good as long as you live? But remember, those benefits are for those who keep his covenant. See, when you get saved and you repent, you enter into a covenant with the Most High. That's what happens. You enter into a covenant. And from then on, the Most High expects for us to live the life of holiness, to be obedient to his commandments. That's why it says right here, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. You say, well, I didn't know that I'm required to keep commandments. Yeah, when you get saved, you are required to keep commandments. Say, well, my pastor never told me that. The preachers on TV don't tell me that. The Bible teachers on the radio don't tell me that. Well, I'm telling you that. Yeah, when you get saved, you are required to keep the commandments. See, you keep the commandments after you get saved. You don't keep the commandments before you get saved. Well, you can keep the commandments before you get saved, but it ain't going to do you no good. <laughs> You've got to be saved first. You've got to come in through faith first. You've got to believe on Yahshua first. And once you're in the family, then the Almighty requires you to keep his commandments. That's right. I'm just, I'm just sharing, the, sharing the gospel the way it really is. You say, well, I, I don't believe that. I didn't hear them. Oh, okay, oh, okay. Well, if you don't believe that, go with me to Hebrews chapter 12. I just want to read this to you. Hebrews chapter 12, very, very familiar scripture. But some of us need to hear this so that we can have some clarification about what the Most High requires out of our lives once we are saved. Because we need to understand that only those of us who are in the Messiah have these benefits of Yah. So let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12. I'm almost there. Just give me a moment. I just went and changed over to another uh, Bible. <laughs> I always keep a couple Bibles here. Hebrews chapter 12. 
And I'm going to go to the 14th verse. Listen to this. Listen to this in the 14th verse. I want you to catch this. This is really important stuff. It says, follow peace with all men and holiness. Now, where it says and holiness, literally in the Greek that I have right here, really it should read the holiness. All right? A lot of times we don't really catch, catch that. But when you read this passage, it's the holiness. <laughs> it's ton hagiasmon, which means the. Ton is the Greek word for the. Hagiasmon is translated holiness or sanctification. It says, follow peace with all men and the holiness. Listen, without which no man shall see the Lord or Yahuwah. So check this out. What is the holiness? Now in the King James translation, they didn't translate it with the word the in there. They just kind of left that out. But the holiness is a definite article. And the holiness is speaking with reference to something specific. And to these Hebrews that were being spoken to when they heard this passage. Because see, originally, before it was translated in the Greek, it was in Hebrew first. And then they translated the Greek. So it was ha kedushin, or the holiness. The holiness refers to the holiness code of the scriptures, the commandments. So the writer of Hebrews is saying, follow peace with all men. This is what the believer is supposed to do. This is what the lifestyle of the believer is. I'm still talking about the obligation of keeping commandments. This is the whole reason why I'm reading this. I'm, I want to connect this so that we can understand says, follow peace with all men. In other words, follow shalom with all men. See, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Being peacemakers. I said a little earlier before I even started the teaching that we're supposed to be peacemakers. We're supposed to be creators of shalom in this world. That's what we're supposed to do. And so here it says, follow peace with all men and the holiness. The holiness means keeping the commandments. Without which, in other words, if you don't do this, <laughs> it's a little catch it. Without which, no man shall see Yahuwah. You ain't going to see Yahuwah if you don't do this. So the, the thing that we have to understand as believers, what we must understand as believers, that even though we might be saved now, and I'm saying saved now because you have those who have this idea that, well, once you're saved, you know, that's it. It don't matter what you do after that. You can do whatever you want after that. You in, you in. No, it don't work like that. It don't work like that. The Most High will bring you in, but when you are in, you're now in a covenant. The Most High saves you so he can bring you in a covenant with him. But if you break that covenant... And you don't follow what the word says, such as confess your sins so that he will be faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. If you continue to live in sin, because the scripture says that if we continue to live in sin, <laughs> if, we, if we continue to practice sin, then we don't know Elohim. It's a proof that we don't have relationship with Elohim. He will cut you off. That's what will happen. There are many who have this idea. They think, oh, well, I'm saved, so that means it's all good. I can do whatever I want to do. No. We were delivered from sin so that we would never go back into committing sin again. He gave us the Holy Spirit so that we could keep his commandments. He, he, he's delivered us out of that. And Paul said that you need to consider yourself dead to trespasses and sin and alive unto righteousness. So the whole idea of the lifestyle 
that the believer is supposed to live is one of obedience to the commandments. We're supposed to follow the holiness, the holiness code in particular. And this is why it's so important that when we look at this psalm, as we go back to it in the 18th verse, all of these benefits of Elohim are for those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. I want to encourage us today to do these things. To keep his covenant. Be committed to him. Be faithful to him. We're married to the Creator. You know, I like to liken that to a marriage, you know, with my wife and I. We're married to each other. We made a commitment that we would be committed to each other and that we would love each other, that we would not stray from our vows of matrimony. And that we would do our very best to bring joy and fulfillment and contentment in each other's life. Now, if I begin to let my eyes wander, let my heart wander, according to this Bible, if I am unfaithful to her or if she is unfaithful to me, there is a law of divorce that the Most High allows, rightfully so. And the Most High has used it himself. So guess what? Yes, we are saved. We are. But if you think you're going to live in sin and not follow his commandments, and think that it's going to be all good, it don't work like that. Elohim will cut you off. And I don't mean to put a damper on a word of encouragement, but it is very important that we understand the truths of the Bible, that we understand the reality of the relationship. I mean, if I want my marriage to work and I want my relationship with my wife to work, it would be completely dumb for me to be going out and sleeping with other women. You know, it, it would be completely dumb. It, it, it just shows that I have no concern for my wife, for her feelings, for the covenant I made with her. And so oftentimes, as believers, and I'm just, you know, making the rubber hit the road. I'm just saying we oftentimes treat our marriage to Elohim the same way. We are wrapped up in wanting to do what we want to do and to please ourselves and are unconcerned about his commandments. Our marriage vows to the Most High are his commandments. That's what we're to do. And I want to encourage you today to keep the covenant. Remember his commandments to do that. Because these benefits of Yah, they're for you. And for those of you who are not believers, who have heard this teaching and who are listening, guess what? Elohim loves you and he wants you to come to him. These benefits can be for you too, but you got to come to him. You got to come in the family. And you've got to become one with the house of Israel through Yahshua. You got to come in. You come to Yahshua, you make him Lord and King of your life. He'll forgive you of all your sins. He'll bring you in, redeem you, cleanse you, forgive you, heal you, crown you with loving kindness, make life good for you. Guess what? All of them benefits will, you, will be yours just as well. They're open to everybody, but everybody don't presently have them because they're not in the family yet. But they're available, but they're only for those who come in the family. Come in the family. Experience the benefits of Yah and let him bless your life. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your mercies and your kindness today. I trust today that 
this uh, word of encouragement to each one that has heard. It has touched hearts, it has touched lives, it has caused people to consider your goodness and your kindness. That it has caused those who are presently believers to be reminded that they can still have joy in a time of chaos. That they could still have peace even though they might have been mistreated. And for those who are not believers that have heard this teaching, I pray for them right now that they turn in repentance. May they receive Yahshua as Savior and Lord over their life. May they be delivered from their sins as they now perform repentance. I thank you in advance for their turning around and coming to you. May those who that are sick in their bodies receive healing. May they believe in your benefits. May they believe by faith that this is a benefit that belongs to them. May they confess it and may they receive it in Yahshua's name. Heal sick bodies. And we thank you for it. In the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. Well, today I trust that this teaching has been helpful to all of you who have taken the time to listen and to hear us teach today. It's been our desire to just really speak from our hearts and to share a word of encouragement and truth. We want you to know that the Almighty loves each and every one of you and that He is at work leading and guiding His people. I want you to know, the scripture says, that the steps of a good man are ordered by Yahuwah. Hallelujah. And the Most High will order your steps. If you put him first, if you let him lead you, you let him guide you, and you get you out of the way. He knows the best path. Trust him. He will guide you. The problem is that many of us don't trust him. Trust him. He'll guide and direct your life. Hallelujah. I want to um, say to those of you who are watching us by live stream, who have heard this teaching, if you believe this teaching has been helpful to you, and we'd like to encourage you to share a donation unto this ministry. When you give to this ministry, what you're actually doing, you're giving to the Most High. And when you give to the Most High, He takes that and He gives us wisdom to utilize those gifts for his purposes that we may continue to bring the word of Elohim to the nations and also to minister to the needs of those who are less fortunate. And those of you who have been encouraged, because there are many of you who do believe in giving to Elohim and sowing, well, we would direct you to go to our website at www dot ncmmi.20m.com you can go there and click on the donate button and you can give by paypal also you can share a donation by cash app that cash app code is dollar sign ncmmi most of all we ask for your prayers your prayers your prayers your prayers we ask for your prayers so that the most high will continue to give us wisdom that we may be able to share the word with clarity, with understanding, with power, and that we may bring truth to you that will liberate you in your heart and in your mind and give you direction in the things of Elohim. Well, the Most High be praised. We thank each and every one of you for watching. Shalom.